Vicki, the presenter now, and want to thank you so much for being a trading warrior brother and coming in to address our community today. So I'm passing you the baton, live from Turkey, Ozgur Hadipoglu. Hadipoglu. Hi, Dale. Hi, I'm there. How are you, buddy? Good, good. Uh, I see it's the first time I join you guys here, but it uh, seems like you guys are doing a fantastic job here. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, you know, uh, some people call us a dream. So, uh, uh, really, I'm glad I reached out to you on Twitter. Uh, I think it was over a tweet on crude oil. And right. uh, you were skeptical of the market. But before we start getting to some of your instruments and it looks like you trade with a great uh, Saxo, one of the finest out there. You could tell them I, I think so. And <clears throat> I'd like to know how long you have been trading. Uh, maybe we could start there and go back in a time machine to tell us what your journey was like, how you first got involved Absolutely. in the trading markets. Absolutely. Um, I started trading um, trading forex in uh, 2005 uh, after I had my degree, my master's degree in California. Oh yeah, where and where were you in California? Long Beach. Okay. Place. All right. Yes, I know it. Uh, I live in Southern California. Yeah, where? I'm, I'm in Temecula, just a little east of San Diego. Oh so, right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What what did you get your so, master's? Uh, what did you get your man? What degree? Come again what there. Degree um, of finance and management. I double majored in both. Okay. And then uh, worked in the States uh, for, for an extra year and then came back to Istanbul. Okay. And uh, I worked in different private banking departments of banks and all that stuff. Okay. And I excelled in uh, options on futures, uh, a bit of uh, Forex. Uh, a lot of futures, okay. some stocks, uh, ETS, and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. your your degree, after a while of being out there in the real world, when you leave the university setting, uh, really uh, there wasn't anything that gave you was as appealing as the markets. You were attracted to the markets right away. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you don't Go get ahead. to learn all that stuff at school or at university in any kind of academy. No. It's just by practice and uh, most of the times it comes with a high cost. I mean, if you don't lose money, you don't learn, right? So let me ask you this. Uh, are you pretty much self-taught or did you have uh, maybe a mentor who took you under their wing or a book or something that was a, a big influence on your trading. Uh, I see you have Ooh. candlesticks on your setup and uh, uh, looks like some type of before you had some pivots and now I'm seeing all kinds of things. So you look at a lot of different things. Uh, who influenced you? Well, um, basically, when I first started working was this uh, local forex company owned by an Asian gentleman in uh, Pasadena. And then uh, we moved to Newport, Newport Beach. Uh, so there they taught us how to do technical analysis, but that was just a one-on-one, right? And then uh, I studied a lot myself uh, about the technical analysis and then a bit of fundamentals. And then uh, I, I actually gave up on studying the indicators and focused more on uh, formations uh, like okay. harmonic formations and uh, okay. and then I figured that options are a good way to make money well was, frankly not to lose money I would say all right well let me ask you okay buying them or selling them um, well up. I am mostly a seller but okay. for, it depends on the situation though but uh, most of the times I'm a seller I collect premium right but, uh, for example for tomorrow uh, with the NFP number coming out um, the best play for euro dollar traders would be by options uh, like there, there options on futures that expire tomorrow 
Okay. So they will they will go for well, um, uh, well, you, you play Coker. You, you, you play expiration poker. Pardon? You you play expiration poker. Um, well, I don't do that, but I sometimes talk about that with people. I'm mostly, personally, I'm mostly a seller. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, you know, that's where all the uh, money is made, being the house. You know, I have, an exactly. expression, I have an expression on options that options are like relationships. 90% of them expire worthless. I've bought a few. How do you protect yourself Very when true. you're a writer? Because I've also seen people where, you know, it's like picking up quarters off the sidewalk that most of the time you're just going to collect the premium. But every once in a while, you're going to have an outsized move that's going to challenge your strike. How do you protect yourself yeah. as an option writer? There is no way getting away from getting ahead once in a while. But uh, when that happens, if, if I figure out that it's going to hit me, I kind of roll uh, my position. Let's say looking at this uh, oil chart let's say i'm selling i'm selling uh let's say six to seven calls which is too close for me to sell i actually go far further out of the money but just for an example let's say i sell i sold uh six to seven calls and it's going up what happens is i buy it back and then how much depending on how much loss i have booked i try to get get that back from the market by selling another option so basically, I roll it to another strike. Okay. That's uh, my motive. Okay. All right. Well, at least you have some type of strategy. So uh, what do you use for forecasting directionality, and what's your view on crude that we're looking at right now? Technically, how does it look? Yeah, uh, of course, charts are lovely. There is no one, I don't know anyone who gets to look at, look at the charts. And 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 I I look at the charts too, but my major drive are more more of the fundamental side, and the and the CFTC commitment of traders report, because those are the big guys that you know rule the market. And uh, currently there is a very interesting situation uh, for oil in the market. Um, well, yeah, yeah. we're at record longs, mm -hmm. but uh, you know that may happen. And a record long is, is a bull game. But what, what could be a bear game is the ratio, the long short ratio uh, of the large speculators is uh, right now it's at 14.17. And last week it was at, at just about 16. That's a record okay, so, value too, which means okay. and, for and, every uh, long, I mean, and you were betting. Uh, you were betting the commercials would be right, correct? They're they're pretty uh, short, aren't they? The the commercials are the hedgers. I'm actually right. looking at the funds, managed money. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so the just because managed it's money it. has 16 longs for each short they carry, that's a record number, and it's not easy to sustain. So, okay, so it's, a, it it's, a, it's over exuberance that, and you're fading it. Come again? It's over exuberance at that ratio. Too much enthusiasm, too much bullishness. And you exactly. think you're looking at that as a contrarian indicator. And that's exactly, why that's very true. Off. Especially when you put the, this ratio chart, uh, well, when you put the price on this ratio chart, even when. Um, before the big plunge in 2014, this ratio was around 15. And two weeks ago, or, or last week, it was about 15, where the price was almost a half of what it was in 2014. So this is again, this again shows us the situation is not sustainable. So it is likely that we're gonna see some, some uh, sliding oil down to around 60 levels. Why I say 60, Dale, is not because I'm looking at the charts. It's uh, because of uh, the open interest of the 60 calls. Pardon? Just a guess. Uh, uh, that it's the open interest on the 60 calls, and you think they're going to fry them, and they're going right, to become worse. That's we're looking at it. That's called option pain. Well, I'm not yeah. looking at single options, but I'm looking at cumulatively. And 
as you said, most of the options that are purchased, once they're, hold, they're held to expiry, like 85-90% of them expire worthless, and that doesn't happen by chance. The market sees how many positions, roughly, of, of, of course, roughly, how many positions there are on, and what's right. So the market drives it to a point that option holders will lose the money. So there is a way to, to calculate this. And upon my calculations, with the option that expired uh, 13 days later, this number comes up at $60. It doesn't necessarily have to hit $60, but anything that comes close to $60 is going to make option buyers lose the largest amount of money, which okay. is whoever drives the market will make that money, will gain that money. Right. So okay. in two weeks, so now, that, I think we're going to see oil prices coming down a little bit, but that's not going to be permanent, I guess, because the main driver again here is uh, the IPO Aramco, Saudi Aramco. You know the 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 main catalyst uh, when evaluating the, the com this company is the oil price. So the higher the oil price, the higher uh, share value will be for this stock. So until the IPO, I guess we're going to see some elevated oil uh, price. But after that, it should be, uh, I think it's going to be uh, good to come down. Can you hear me? I'm curious. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Right now I can. Oh, okay. okay. So uh, the Saudis want a higher price for the IPO. So uh, yeah. maybe uh, that's pretty obvious. Uh, do you know if they have it scheduled? It's uh, still not no, scheduled, I is it? They're, they're trying to find a good uh, exchange where they can do it successfully. They want like uh, 70, 80 bucks to do it, I think. So uh, maybe uh, we have some conflict with Iran and they get 100. Um, let me ask you this. We have a similar set up um, in the COT uh, positioning with record longs in Euro, and we have yeah. for quite some time. Uh, what are the options telling you in Euro? Well, um, I am also looking at the are Euro you selling, positioning. Are you selling right uh, like 125, 126 calls up here? Uh, let me see, just one sec. Okay, we are uh, at the record all-time high net longs here. Even right. when the price was around 160s in 2008 and 9, the net long number was around 120k. And right now we're about 145k long positions. So, uh, and the price is much lower than what it was before. Uh, compared to 2008 and 9. So yeah. this is too many long positions, but not such a strong pricing. So one of them is lying. And given the interest rate differential between German bonds and US treasuries, if you ask me, my opinion is the price is lying. Uh, so, so it's been lying for so what? It's been lying me? about uh, nine cents already, or what? Come again, I can't hear you. Okay, uh, well, we've had these positions. I remember everyone commenting in on it when the euro was trading under 120, and a lot of people were fading euro strength under 120 because of the COT. Um, you know, we've rallied uh, another four handles or so. Um, why now is it any different than it was, say, a month or two ago? It's gotten more extreme? Um, well, what is really driving the market is unknown to me. It is more of not the euro strength, but the dollar weakness. It's about the dollar index. Mm -hmm. uh, Do you have a view on that? Do you have a view on the Dixie? Yeah, I guess I do. Just one sec. In a, and uh, a technical opinion of it? Absolutely, just one sec. Okay. I'm going to squeeze this. Okay, so you have that. You use FIBS too. You use everything. 
except indicators. Um, Anything you could draw on the chart? I, from time to time, I look. You can't do it without indicators. Yeah. There is a there's a pretty strong uh, cluster here. Right. Lots of confluence. See? And yeah. if I can extend it as well, and you see all this, uh, you know, price movement, little price moves here. So right now we're in an area where uh, potentially dollar index will will respond and uh, will respond that it's going to go up to somewhere about 90. And that's when there is going to be a good good correction in the market, in the currency market, in favor of dollars for for every major. Okay, uh, you're saying if the Dixie closes above 90, that's going to be a trigger, a catalyst uh, for a further dollar rally. Yes, I see it that way. Okay. Uh, what else is on your radar? Uh, are um, well, I have. Uh, I'll show this to you. Uh, soybean. Oh, you trade the grains too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Look, these guys undervalued for for quite a long time because of the uh, high supplies. Right. But uh, if you look at the if you look at the S and P for equity versus commodities ratio, right. this ratio has been uh, way low for a long time. Uh, and it's been in, in favor of equities, and I think we could be near, near uh, time-wise, we could be getting close to a, a correction in favor of commodities. So this is one thing. Also, I have uh, some this long positions in. Uh, this is the bean oil. Wheat and corn. Wheat and corn. Soybean oil. Uh, soybean oil, yes. Soybean oil too. Okay. Also, I every now and then I, I trade the uh, uh, coffee and cacao futures because they're trading in ranges and uh, they they give pretty good profit. Do you miss California? Well, uh, you know, life life is life. I mean, it depends on how you take life. Back there, I was. I was not married, you know, I was single and I had a good and fast life. <laughs> yeah. And then I came here and a couple of years I got married. Now I'm father to three kids. Okay. That's yeah. another life and I love it. <laughs> Those are very long term positions. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> the longest term position you could take. Uh, maybe not yeah. always with husbands and wives, but you're always a father and a mother. So you can't. You can find an option with a longer expiration date than being a father. That's true. What do you think of that? Of course, that's the oh. my kids are my largest, my biggest investments, and okay. I hope uh, they turn you out. Want to them, people. You want them to learn how to trade? No. Well, they, I want them to know the value of money and uh, you know how to manage their money. But I don't want them to be a trader. It's too stressful. That's why I'm not trading forex. Well, I am seldomly trading forex, but I'm mostly trading options. Okay. Okay. Well, I I really want to thank you for coming in. Anything you want to share? And what's interesting is uh, you don't have any business model. Uh, you're not so. Your, or do you teach people how to trade or mentor people uh, or just strictly trade your account? Well, I'm actually working for uh, for an investment house and uh, through my career, I have uh, lectured lots of people about risk management and uh, options and futures, all these calculations and all that stuff. And uh, I still can do it, but it's not. And there is nothing scheduled yet. But I'll be happy to be. I'm very happy to, to be here, and I'll be happy if you remind me again. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Oscar, that you came in today, and very interesting take on how you use option markets for a guide for direction and sentiment. I wish you good luck on. Uh, 
I think you're going to be in great shape selling those oil calls. I think the hedgers will get it back to that price you're talking about. And a uh, very interesting conversation and uh, glad that our paths crossed. I, I want to thank you very much. And like it or not, you're now my trading more your brother. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Over. Thank okay, you. Oscar. Take care. Right. Good hunting. And may pips rain down on you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, buddy. Okay, that's a wrap. Uh, his Twitter is the same as his name. O Z G U R H A T I P O G L U. Got that, Michael? Okay. See everyone tomorrow for NFP. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. See you all tomorrow. Adios.